Um, good morning, everyone. Sir Ravi, colleagues on the dais, and thank you, EQ, for giving this opportunity to put a few words uh, that might be considered. I think uh, Manish has covered from a lot of points, but since this is a technology forum, um, having been in this sector for last um, seven to eight years now, uh, I have only one first point is that uh, the technology in, uh, in, in uh, solar is still not understood correctly. Um, the main thing that goes into the project, that's modules and inverters. They are um, essentially evolving at a very fast rate. And now there is talk of uh, integration of the inverters into the module themselves so that we don't have to put those central inverters. So technological shifts are happening. So let's focus on the generation side. And uh, a lot of things, this is, although this sector has been brought up by IPPs mostly, it is still driven by policy 100%. We depend on bids. And that is one thing which um, has its own issues. As we don't understand the technology completely, as Mani said, it is, we are as a throwback. The people who do the policies, they are mostly from thermal background. Most of us are from thermal background, thermal hydro, whatever. So it's just five, seven years. And um, we don't have so much focus on the technology so that people understand it. And who has to understand the technology, not the engineers per se, but the policymakers, the bankers, the financiers, the people who put money. So what we are doing now is we are trying to understand that, okay, this is a technology which is tested in lab because unlike uh, thermal or any other technology, old technologies, we don't have that experience of seeing, having seen uh, the solar on the ground for the 25 years that we are pro everybody is promising, including it starts with the model manufacturers with the warranties, guarantees, so we'll see how it evolves. Plus, um, there is a tariff pressure. Now it becomes commercial because technology will not stand alone on its own. So there is a tariff pressure. So what people are trying to do is trying to understand if the technology itself can go down in price so that they can factor in. Now what happens is in the solar thing, at least as, it, as the technology exists now in a solar project, it's either silicon or metals. There is not more, much more of it, other than the buildings and other things, which is around 10 to 12% of the cost. 60% is silicon, that is your uh, modules. Electronics, another 7%. And then it is either copper or steel or insulation. These are the four or five things. And the price of the copper and steel, they are not solar focused. So they are not going to come down in the near future, at least the indication that comes out from LME and other places. So we'll have to see how to match that. The expectation of ministry is that the price will come down. And it has to come down and down and down and that's what, and it is going down. So ministry is saying, okay, you guys are coming and putting the uh, price. So we are not responsible for it. But probably the BIS and other things, the past has not been very encouraging, but hopefully they will bring in the technology. So there is at least a minimum quality that can be, um, put in place, then we will know what the real price is. Today, I am free to choose any module, which I don't know if it will work for 25 years. Uh, I'm not talking about myself. I'm saying in general, the industry, because we take a great care. Most of the big players are taking great care and they're under severe stress. So that's one part of the thing. Now, if we go the, to the demand side, demand is, there is, is, is a well-known figure. 300 million people in India do not have access to electricity. So energy access and energy security, if we look at that, I think the grid, today the grid is designed in a manner that is again, it has taken 100 years to evolve. So that means produce as much as you can at one place and transmit, take it to as far as possible through a long line. And that has taken to reduce the losses. You have to go on voltage upgradation from 1000 volt, then 1500 volt and everything. So fundamentally, now 
if we think probably one of the thing which we should be focusing on is I'm not getting into the rooftop and other things that has been already spoken about probably smart grid probably microgrids and uh, with the ESS because people need light electricity in the night and now the storage storage is as we know again it is stuck in the old days zinc I think it's better. Lithium ion is the only flavor of the time, but the costs, they are not making sense till now. It has to come down, what I'm, I'm told, has to come down to around $150 per kilowatt. This is stuck in the range of around 300 kilowatt because the R&D costs are being loaded. We don't have. So what we do is we do good manufacturing. So we manufacture a lot of things. If we go this way from technological angle, one is the silicon and these batteries, 25 years down the line, we will have a lot of land which will not be usable, a lot of silicon, we don't know how to recycle them, and lots of batteries. So that's an environmental issue I just want to flag. But that's it, I'm saying that has to be there, there has to be some solution. I hope someone somewhere is looking at it. So probably the future of the grid is not to be the centralized generation and then taking it the farthest corner possible through a wire. Rather, if we can have smart things which can manage the grid, and that there comes your forecast. Somehow, wind, although we know that we can't predict when the wind will come, that is being forecasted. But solar, till now, is not possible to forecast so easily. So that is something, if the forecasting can be brought in, then I can plan and design a system which will probably, I can fit either a storage or my generation or my planning everything I can do and the system operator I mean again their names have not been upgraded to system operator they're still dispatching load right by names so probably they will have a better grip over the thing so probably generation side so summarizing I, there are a lot of I will not talk about GST because uh, again uh, mostly there is one thing we'll have to do on this Essentially, we are evolving. We are experimenting. We are trying to find out what will happen. So on the generation side, we'll have to see what technology will come and how it will be using less land, less resource, less water, so that we remain focused on that without consuming too much of natural resource, we can still be uh, using uh, whatever is available and efficiency has to be high. So high efficiency from the generation side plus an integration kind of thing. On grid side actually we'll have to probably distribute it over the people who need electricity and uh, IT has to take probably a lead role in the technology. And uh, today the main integrating factor since it is driven still by policy the policy is still fragmented and we are going also another thing just I'll put I'm not sure how much is applicable here we are focusing on solar and wind maybe we should focus on even biomass in a proper manner the technology has improved possibly and that is uh, polluting but then at least it is somewhat perennial um, second thing is other technologies like geothermal and we are thinking of producing more and more electricity to fulfill the demand because we, we are not able to do that. Possibly we can think of reducing the demand because geothermal is, can, is not only used for generating electricity. That can be very well used for uh, cooling as well. So if, and a lot of our load as of now and is going to be in future is going to come from conditioning of the climate. And if we can manage that through something else probably we don't we won't be needing to generate so much so from generation and grid side i will not touch distribution because that's a different topic altogether so i think that's where i will leave it thank you so much for the invitation thank you for your patience and listening and thank you uq for inviting me have a good day